Well, praise God for another day and for another opportunity to share the word of God. For those of you who do not know, I'm Pastor Oliver, and I'm here to share the good news. That is the word of God with you. So let's go ahead and uh, pray and jump right into our lesson for this morning. Father, we are so grateful and ever thankful to you for this privilege as well as this opportunity to share your word. Father, I invite your peace, your power, and your presence to be brought to bear upon me as I minister your word and upon the viewing audience as they hear your word. God, I thank you for your anointing that's in me, and I pray that the same anointing that's in me will come on me as I stand and share the word of God. I pray, God, that you would think through my mind, that you would speak through my vocal cords. I pray that it be all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, uh, we have uh, been for the last three to four weeks, we have been uh, talking and teaching along the line of kingdom reset. And of lately, in fact, as of uh, last Sunday, I uh, uh, shared a subtitle with you, Oneness of Purpose. And of course, that's what unity is, oneness of purpose. Um, and so uh, this morning, we're going to uh, start uh, with uh, our subtitle, and that is Oneness of Purpose, Part 2. Oneness of Purpose, Part 2. There is a, uh, and I'm not fixing to sing, okay, but there is a, um, a song. I don't know the name of it, don't know who sing it, but there's a part of it uh, that has been resonating in my heart. And I guess because of where I'm at right now and the things that I'm studying and teaching. And uh, it says, <clears throat> Jesus is the answer for the world today. Um, you know, and, and of course, when that first came up in my spirit, I began to ponder and to meditate upon that. And, uh, you know, uh, hands down, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amen. And I believe, child of God, that if anyone have the answer to what we have before us, it's the church. It's the body of Christ. And uh, certainly there are some things that we are going to have to do, make some adjustments and uh, what have you um, come into the knowledge of some truth. Amen. And then begin to walk out or to walk in uh, that knowledge and, um, you know, and really see genuine change. I'm not talking about, you know, talking about change. I'm talking about seeing experientially change uh, brought about uh, concerning uh, the issue that we've been talking about. That is racism. So um, let's go ahead and uh, and start this morning. Um, uh, let's start, uh, Leela, with um, Psalms 133, verse number one. Psalms 133, verse one. From the King James. All right. Here we go. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Notice here, the writer says, how good and pleasant. Amen. It's good and pleasant uh, for brethren. Uh, and I believe that uh, I might not need to highlight this, but just for the sake of, of uh, you know, bringing some understanding or attempting to bring some understanding Notice it said how good and pleasant it is for brethren. It didn't say for people to dwell together. It said for brethren. And, of course, brethren is making reference to the body of Christ. Amen. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell. <laughs> to dwell in 
together rather in unity. Let's go on. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down. Notice it started at the head and ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard uh, that went down to the skirts of his garment. Last verse. As the dew. Now, these are uh, metaphors, examples of uh, this, this, this unity. Uh, so here he says, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon Mount, the mountain of Zion, for there, for there. Now, again, he's, he's emphasizing there is referring to uh, in unity, okay? For there, the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. So here's what I want to emphasize from this verse as we uh, start this morning. I want to emphasize the fact that where God finds unity, where he finds oneness of purpose, he commands, he orders his blessings upon those people. Amen. Or that the effort that they're expending. Amen. To display unity. You know, it takes... Uh, it takes a lot, amen, to, um, to operate or to function in unity. And, um, you know, and of course, it doesn't take anything that God hasn't prepared or made available for us uh, to do and to implement. But notice it said, dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. But God commands his blessings. Now, notice he orders his blessings. You know, and, and I believe this is, this is just, you know, what I believe. You, you don't have to take this, um, you know, uh, but I believe that commanding his blessing, you know, is, you know, the Bible said that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow. Uh, the, the scripture talks about, you know, all things are possible to them that believe and, and so forth and so on. But where we see the blessings of God uh, being um, uh, disposed or exposed, then you can rest assured that God has found a people that is functioning and operating in unity. Amen. So where God finds unity, he orders or he commands his blessings. Amen. All right. Let's look, if you will, at Genesis chapter 11, the book of Genesis chapter 11. <clears throat> All right. Genesis chapter 11, let's start with verse 4. King James Version, Genesis 11 and 4. Now, of course, this is the a story about the, the, tibble, the Tower of Babel. Uh, the, there were some people, you know, that, that uh, wanted to make a name for themselves. So here we go. Listen to this. And they said, that is these people, go to let us build us a city. I want you to notice now. The emphasis is placed on them. They didn't say, let us, you know, work with God and allow him to, you know, to work through us. They said, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name. At uh, least we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Notice the, the repetitive us, us, us. And so, again, they're leaving God out of the equation. They are attempting to do something. You know, they are attempting to make a name for themselves. <clears throat> and so let's go to the next verse. And the Lord came down <laughs> and God showed up and God came down um, to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord said. Notice now, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one. They are united. The people is one. And by the way, let me, let me, let me uh, say this. You know, unity is powerful. But then you have what I want to refer to uh, 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 in, in this instance here is illegitimate unity. Because this was an exclusion 
uh, of God. They, God was nowhere in the picture. So, so yes, this is unity, but it's illegitimate unity. All right. Behold, the people is one. They are united. And they all have one language. And this, that is the building or the attempt to build the Tower of Babel, this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Nothing. Nothing will be restrained or nothing will be withheld from them, which they have imagined or have purpose to do. Verse 7. Go to, let us go down there and confound or confuse their language. That they may not understand one another's speech. Okay, hold it right there. So notice what God said. You know, I got to go down there. I got to stop these folk. <laughs> because if I don't stop them, this is just the beginning of what they are going to do. But notice it said because they were one and that they had one language. Amen. They were unified and they had a purpose. Amen. But God came, showed up on the scene. And the scripture says he had to confound or confuse their language that they may not understand one another. That was the only way that this this madness <laughs> could stop. Amen. And, and, and it did stop. But now notice what happened, because this is what they feared. Verse eight. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth. And they left off to build the city. So the Lord scattered them. <laughs> Come on, he had to. Because this was just the beginning of what they, uh, you know, uh, imagined to do. Hallelujah. But now notice, I refer to this and because it is illegitimate unity. But what we're going to talk about, what we're going to major on is legitimate unity. Amen. All right, so let's go uh, to John chapter number 17. This is uh, the situation here where Jesus was about to be arrested. And uh, I believe that, well, all of what Jesus says is important. But I believe that there is a key in these particular verses. John chapter 17, let's start with verse number 11. That in these particular verses, I believe it holds the key for the church, the body of Christ, uh, where unity is concerned. Amen. Now, I want you to notice something here now. <clears throat> and now, I am no more in the world. This is Jesus. I'm no, more, I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, watch this, that they may be one as we are. Now notice that they may be one, that they may be united. Listen, as we are, the same way. Just like you and I are united, just like you and I are one, that they may be one. Now I want you to notice something here. I don't know why I, I pick up on these things, but now notice something. Notice Jesus did not say that they may remain as one, but rather he said that they may be as one. So not notice it wasn't like, you know, they were all unified or they were in unity. And so now Jesus was appealing to the father, you know, to help them to stay in, in unity. No, he said that they may be one important point that's going to come out, uh, <clears throat> come back up again. Notice now go back. Notice the latter part of this verse says that they may be one as we are. So as we look at how Jesus and God was one, uh, you know, and how Jesus, you know, honored the father, the things that Jesus did. But Jesus said, as we are. So he wants, listen, he wants you and I, uh, you know, to operate in unity the same way he and his father operated in unity. All right, <clears throat> let's go to verse 21. Verse 21. Notice now that they may be one. Verse 21. That they may be one. Here we go again. 
that they may be one as thou father art in me, I in you that they also may be one in us. They also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou has sent me. That the world may believe now notice because it seemed like what Jesus is saying here that unless they are unified, the world will not believe that you sent me. So it's in you and I being unified that would be the convincing uh, way that the world will believe that God sent Jesus. Wow. Look at what, you know, and that's just the beginning of, of our unity, of, you know, of sharing the importance of unity. Because Jesus, listen, Jesus wanted to make sure that the world would believe, <laughs> that the world would believe that God sent him through our unity. Wow. All right, let's look, if you will, at verse 22. Verse 22, and again, Notice Jesus talking about that they may be one, that they may be one. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. The same glory <clears throat> that you gave me, I have given them. Why? That they may be one, <laughs> even as we are one. See, again, he's emphasizing over and over the importance of, of unity that we may be one even as me and my father are one and then the last verse uh, verse 23 I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one that they may be made complete in one and that the world may know see I'm telling you it's something about this unity that Jesus Christ is digging into and trying to convey by his spirit to his people. Notice now he said that they may be made perfect or complete in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. So we see four different times Jesus emphasizing that the church, the body of Christ may be one, that the body of Christ may be unified. Amen. Now, so what is unity? What is unity? <laughs> because if, if we are going to uh, have to expand and put forth effort you know, to be uh, in, in unity or to function in the flow in unity, we first of all, we got to understand what it is. So here we go. Unity is distinctiveness going in the same direction in order to achieve a common purpose. Here we go again. Unity is distinctiveness going in the same direction to achieve, watch this, a common purpose. Amen. So that's where um, I get our subject matter from. Our subtitle is oneness of purpose. It's not just oneness, <laughs> but it's oneness of purpose. Amen. All right. So <clears throat> we got to understand how important it is that as the body of Christ that we strive uh, to uh, be in unity among one another. And now listen, Jesus would not uh, go through all these different things or to, to mention the different instances where one is concerned unless we can do this. And child of God, <laughs> we can do this. Amen. Now, Satan has sent the same spirit, that is the spirit of division among us today. You know, the Bible says uh, in, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I believe it's 2 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians 4, 4, that Satan is the God of this world. And 
because, listen, we are not ignorant of his devices, as I mentioned on last week. And the word devices, that means mind games. We're not ignorant of his mind games, you know, and yet if 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 we were ignorant of his mind games, then he would play us against one another. And to some degree, he's done that with many believers. You know, uh, the Bible says, you know, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof, <laughs> you know, is death and destruction. You know, because a lot of times we can think that we are so right. And yet we are so wrong. And, you know, so we need to be cognizant of the fact that Satan will attempt to play mind games on us. He will attempt to put us at odds with one another. He will attempt to bring confusion. He will attempt to get us off focus. And all of these things are major distractions, people of God. They are distractions to you and I, listen, from fulfilling the purpose that Jesus Christ has sent us to accomplish. And I want to get to that because I want you to understand, first and foremost, listen, racism, injustice, um, prejudice, you know, all the things that, you know, that we are dealing with in this world today. And I'm talking about of lately, it has resurfaced big time. <clears throat> the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are we doing? What are we doing? Are we just uh, talking about it? Are we uh, just silent? You know, we don't say anything. You know, and I'm, 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 I'm now mainly talking to my white brothers and sisters because I think a lot of times, you know, uh, they uh, may feel as though, what, if I don't say nothing about it, then, you know, no, listen, it's not going to go away. You know, it's not going to go away. And, you know, it's time that, you know, we really put forth effort to deal with this. Now, because to say nothing, you know, would make us as the church complicit to whatever is going on. Amen. So we, we don't want to say nothing. I believe that if you don't know what to say, talk to the Lord. Amen. Not only will I believe that God would not, would not only rather give you what to say, but even uh, to the point he may just have you to do something. Amen. Now, I have to admit uh, the recent incident where George Floyd uh, um, is concerned, uh, I have seen uh, just through that uh, incident, I have seen more whites from pastors to lay members, you know, really standing up, you know, and and um, making their voices uh, be heard. I, I've seen that. This is the first time I've seen it on this level. Amen. And, and rightfully so, you know, but uh, and I mentioned this again, I want to say this um, I, on last week, you know, uh, there are a lot of people, unfortunately, that are in the body of Christ. And that is why my white brothers and sisters that are afraid, they are scared to say anything. You know, it's almost like they're paralyzed, you know, because they don't want to upset their there are other brothers and sisters or white brothers and sisters or, you know, or they don't want to make them think this or that or whatever. Fooey on that. Who cares? You know, we have to listen as the body of Christ. We have to stand up for what's right. Amen. We have to, you know, and that, you know what? Let me let me give you the definition of integrity. Integrity is doing what's right because it's right and doing it right. Just doing the right thing. You know, God doesn't want you, uh, my brothers and sisters, to be in fear. You know, he wants you free. He wants you to be able, listen, you know, to speak what's on your heart or rather to speak what he puts on your heart to speak. Or he wants you to be free to do what he puts upon your heart to do. Amen. So now. <sighs> Jesus made it clear. He said that the father sent him to do some things. I want us to look at that right quick. Uh, let's look at uh, John chapter number four. John chapter number four. And 
And verse 33, John 4 and 33. <clears throat> Therefore said the disciples one to another, have any man brought him aught to eat? Have any, has anyone brought him anything to eat? Next verse. Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. <laughs> my meat, my nourishment, the Amplifier says, is to do the work of him that sent me, or the will, excuse me, of him that sent me, watch this, and to finish his work. I have a footnote here that says, Jesus, listen, demonstrated the level of commitment that we should exemplify in doing the will of God. You know, I mean, he demonstrated a lot of things to us. But he, listen, demonstrated the level of commitment that we should exemplify in doing the will of God and finishing his work. So, <clears throat> Now, I want you to understand that Jesus made it clear that his meat or his nourishment was to do the will of him that sent me. Now, uh, let's look, if you will, uh, at verse, um, excuse me, chapter 17, verse number four. Chapter 17, verse number four. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He says, talking to God, he said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I, I've glorified thee on the earth. How? I have finished. <laughs> I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. So Jesus said, listen, I have glorified thee on the earth. I finished the work that you gave me to do. I finished it. Amen. Now, let's look, if you will, <clears throat> at uh, verse 18. Same chapter, verse 18. Because what I want you to see is, just like God sent Jesus to, to finish or to do a work, Jesus now is sending us, the body of Christ, to do a work. Watch this. Verse 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. So now, listen, Jesus modeled this thing for us. I mean, it wasn't a drill, <laughs> if, if I'm making it seem that way, but he modeled this for us. Now, so he says here, even so have I also sent them into the world. And I'm going to tell you something, child of God, that's what all of this stuff is about. That, that's what all the racism, all the injustice, inequality, prejudice, all of it is about. And that is Satan's attempt to stop the body of Christ from, from, from rather fulfilling what Jesus Christ has sent us to do. You hear what I'm saying? His attempt is to divert our attention, to get us off focus. You know, but Jesus said this. <laughs> he said, now, because the people are one, they are unified. Now, nothing that they have imagined to do will be withheld or restrain, restrained from them. And it's time for us to get busy, child of God. Amen. To make unity uh, a, a strive for us. Amen. All right. Now, as I said, Satan opposed anything that's of God. He opposed anything that will bring glory to God. Yes, anything that will bring glory to God. He doesn't want God to get glory for nothing. Amen. So, I define unity again as unity, unity rather as the distinctiveness going in the same direction in order to achieve a common purpose. Now, unless, listen, 
unless you know what that common purpose is, unity can't exist. No, it, it can't exist. You know, I used a football team uh, on last week, you know, to uh, help to describe, you know, uh, unity. <clears throat> you know, because unity uh, of purpose, listen, unity of purpose is not sameness of purpose. In other words, uh, God didn't call us all to be the same, but yet he expects for us to be unified. And the only way we, you and I can be unified is we got to be headed towards a purpose. And child of God, I'm not just talking about black folk. Now, I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I don't have a lot of time. I'm just going to talk like we talk. I'm not talking about black folk, just black folk doing this. No, I'm talking about white folk and black folk. I'm talking about Asians. I'm talking about Latinos. And I'm talking about all of those people in the body of Christ. I, I definitely don't want to make it seem like I'm just talking about a certain uh, 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 select group of people. I'm talking about the body of Christ. So now notice I gave the example of unity. Uh, or oneness of purpose, and I use as an illustration a football team. Uh, I said to you that uh, at, on any given day, as what well, well, football is concerned, there are 11 players on the field. Now, each one of those players have a position to play. You got linebacker, you got quarterback, you got the center, you got different uh, positions. But now watch this, different positions, but yet they have one goal in mind, and that is, is to make a touchdown or to reach that goal. Amen. Now, they got different functions here now. <laughs> All right. Now, notice they have different functions, but they have one purpose. And that's to make, touch, make a touchdown. And, of course, you know how the game goes. At the end of the game, whoever has the most touchdowns win the game. Amen. And that's across the board. Listen. If we're going to operate in unity, and I believe that to, to, a, to, a, a, to a degree, this is the reason why some people, God bless their hearts, have failed to make any effort or any strive, you know, to operate in the, or the function in unity because they have not understood the purpose. You know, I, I mean, you know, they understand the oneness, but I'm talking about oneness of purpose. Amen. Now, so listen. You need me, and I need you. We, we need each other. Amen. All right, let's look at something. Uh, let's look, if you will, at, uh, oh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, from the message translation. I, I want to, before I share this other part with you, I want to, uh, share with you the purpose of the church. <clears throat> um, you know, the primary purpose, I should say, of the church. But now, 1 Peter, chapter 2, from the message translation, notice what this verse says. Talking about the church now. Now, you might not feel like this, <laughs> amen, but this is what God says about you. <laughs> All right? He says, but you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work. Chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and to speak out for him and to speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he that is God has made for you or has made in your life. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> the church is a community of individuals spiritually linked together for the purpose of, watch this, number one, reflecting Jesus Christ. That's becoming more Christ-like. Amen. That's 1 John. In fact, the scripture in 1 John 4, we're not going to turn there, it says this. It says, as he is, so are we in the world today. As he is, so are we. As he is presently, so are we now. So number one, we are, to, we are to be a reflection of Jesus Christ. Number two, we are to glorify God. 
Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, but glorify God. So we are to glorify God. And number three, I mentioned this to you on last week. We are to influence as many people as possible for Jesus Christ. We are to populate the kingdom of God. Amen. Because, listen, as the scripture says, it says that, you know, uh, that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Amen. So we got to be about our father's business. Amen. Now, I mentioned to you, you need me and I need you. Why? Because there are things that you can do that I can't do. There are things that I can do that you can't do. Amen. Now, <clears throat> The reason why I'm emphasizing this is because there has been this separation in the body of Christ. There, there has been a separation in the body of Christ. And for the most part, you've had white people attending their church. You've had black people attending their church. You know, and I don't believe that's the way God intends for it to be. I mean, now, again, I know maybe there might be some things some of you are thinking, well, you know, you're missing it. No, listen. I believe, listen, that our whole objective as the body of Christ, listen, is to be unified. I, I believe that. And that we are to do the work of the Lord together. Amen. Now, so we need each other. Amen. Now, in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, Verse number 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 12. <clears throat> For as the body is one, the body is one. Amen. Now, that's talking about the body of Christ. All right. And have many members. One body many members all right now watch this and all the members of that one body being many <clears throat> are one body so also is christ so <clears throat> we are members of his body now you got to get this you need me and i need you verse 13. now <clears throat> i want you to understand now that there is there is a metaphor as it were in terms of uh, helping us to understand how important it is uh, or how we should see one another uh, as being vital and necessary in the body of Christ. Okay? All right. So, uh, I don't have time to get into that one because I really want to emphasize uh, the importance of you and I being one and that we depend upon one another. <clears throat> All right. First Corinthians 12. Let's look at 27. 12. 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set. No, let's back up. Let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, back up to. 14, 12 and 14. All right, for the body is not one but many, all right, 15. Now watch this. This is where I want to end today because I want you to see how important, listen, you know, that my hand is not just important, but my feet is just as important. That my eyes are just not, you know, the whole psalm and that's it. But my legs are important. I mean, every part of my body is important. Just like every part of the body of Christ, every person that is a part of the body of Christ is important. And see, what, what has happened is, listen, that devil, the devil has capitalized on our differences. You remember I mentioned to you about the football team, the different positions? Well, he has he has capitalized on our differences and I, I'll, I'll bring the differences out in just a minute. 
But notice it said, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not <clears throat> of the body. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is that, is it rather, therefore not of the body? Next verse. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? Or where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the smelling? But now, God has set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. God has set every member in the body as it has pleased him. See, what has happened is, rather than celebrating our differences, we have allowed the enemy, and, and of course we didn't invite him in and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, ask for his direction, to, you know, so we can bring confusion and what. No, listen, but because people, listen, because, you know, I'm a Democrat and you're a Republican, I don't like you, uh, because you're black and I'm white, you know, and, and, and just, you know, he has, he has highlighted you know, our differences, rather than, rather than you and I celebrating our differences, because, listen, I am, listen, who I am by God's design. You are who you are by God's design. You know, and the scripture says very plainly that God has set, he has set, God has set the members, every one of them. I'm a member, you a member. He has set every set the members, every one of them in the body. Listen, as it please him, <laughs> as it please him, he has set in the body. Amen. So listen, if we are going to be unified, if we're going to be, you know, one like Jesus said that we are to be one, we have to be unified. We got to understand what our purpose is. <clears throat> Uh, you know, as a church or as a body. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> disunity is the opposite of unity. And that's what racism has brought into the body of Christ. Disunity. It has brought in schism. It has brought in you know, all the things that the enemy is attempting to use to divide us. You know, the scripture talks about, well, I say the scripture, but it says, you know, divide. I mean, rather, the scripture says that a kingdom divided cannot stand. And that's what Satan is attempting to do is to divide us. But we got to be just as determined as he is, listen, you know, to take authority over those spirits or the enemy in his attempts. Amen. And we have to strive and make every effort necessary, listen, to see to it, you know, that we demonstrate our care and our concern for our brothers and sisters, black or white, Latino, uh, Mexican, you know, uh, Italian. Listen, we have to extend ourselves, amen, to love one another. If you would take, if you would do this, let me give you this homework. Uh, I, I uh, issued this challenge to our church at one time. If you would go through the New Testament and find every place that it says one another, and you'll see, listen, I mean, there, there's a wealth of scripture that talks about one another, you know, putting up with one another, praying for one another, you know, uh, bearing one another's burden, you know, there, and it goes on and on. This is referring to, listen, the body of Christ. Amen. This is referring to the body of Christ. Yes. You know, uh, I might be black and you are white. Amen. But we should celebrate our differences. We shouldn't highlight them. You know, <clears throat> yes, I may be a Democrat or I may be a Republican, but I shouldn't hold that against you because you are not of the same party that I am. I'm of. You know, so I'm telling you, you know, if, if we're not careful, then the, the enemy would use the least difference to divide us. But we have to make every necessary effort to stay unified. Are you hearing me, my brothers and sisters? Amen? 
All right, so my time is up, <clears throat> and certainly I thank you for yours. As always, I never want to close out uh, a time of ministry uh, such as we have uh, had here this morning without extending an, an invitation to those who just may want to give their life to the Lord. Amen. Don't want to take it for granted. Um, uh, but I do believe that there's a possibility that there are many of you or there are some of you that want to give your life to the Lord. Because, you know, in this day and time, listen, you know, it's tough living without Jesus. Trust me. I mean, you know, the challenge, you know, is great for us who are living for him. And I know I can imagine what it's like, you know, for those who are not you know, or have not made a decision to accept or to receive Jesus into their life. And so I want to pray with you. Amen. I want to pray with you. Let's pray. Dear God, I'm asking you now to come into my life. I confess with my mouth Jesus as Lord. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. Right now, I believe that I'm saved. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you now to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill me with overflowing with your power and with yourself. Help me to live for God as best as I know how. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it, then welcome to the family. You are now a part of the family of God. We celebrate you. Amen. Now, I'm I want to encourage you rather to visit our website. That's uh, at the bottom of the screen is our website, www.nloc-outreach.com, amen, and access the tab that says, now what, amen, and when you access that tab, you'll find some information in there uh, for you that will be necessary uh, and help you to get started in your new life in Christ, amen. Again, welcome to the family. Also, in closing, um, I want to give uh, you the opportunity uh, to sow and to give into the ministry. Now, newness of life, you know what you need to do concerning the tithes and the offerings. But for others, I'm, I want to extend an opportunity to you, rather, to sow and to give into the ministry. Uh, I want to say that whatever the Lord say for you to do, then I want to encourage you to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, that being said, uh, until next week, remember, you can walk in a new quality of life.